Okay, this is the complimentary video for my uh, the Worth the Effort Prerequisite Series course, the first episode, kind of the introductory. Uh, I just want to go over a few things with those of y'all that might be wanting to teach woodworking or stuff like that to maybe your teens or uh, other friends and stuff like that. I will say this on ages and stuff. I have had a woodworking school where during the daytime I tried to teach homeschool and stuff like that, and Towards the end, I came down with a very hard and fast rule that I really did not want to teach those under 13 years old. It had nothing to do with, you know, YouTube's cope or anything like that. I just found that there's some some kind of hand-eye coordination, maturity level, brain kicking on for risk aversion, the ability to judge that under a teenager. It just doesn't happen, and kids got frustrated. And the worst thing I could do is have a kid come into my course and chase them away from the hobby. I felt horrible when I had that one, and you know, it, it, some of it might have been my teach, my ability as a teaching fault, but it was little things like you know they'd be sawing and on, trying to stay on a line, then they get dr distracted, focusing on their hand movements or something like that, and be off the line and get kind of upset with themselves and couldn't. It was the coordination of multiple different things that just frustrated them to death and it really it's just kind of nine day difference around that 13 year range and this is not uncommon if you go back in history you know back early 19 1800s when parents basically gave away their kids to indigent servitude you know the earliest that they took those kind of kids were around the 10 and 11 age and those first few years, all the kids really did was stay around the shop, sweep up, run errands, go grab lunch, that kind of stuff. Whenever they became 13, some of the first tasks that they, they were getting then were things like straightening nails. They would pull nails out of old work, hit them on a little anvil, because nails were expensive back then, and straighten them out. A repetitive process that taught them eye-hand coordination, stuff like that. Then they would progress up to, you know, planing smoothing tops and stuff like that just very small task that was very repetitious so that they could develop the high end coordination and they really didn't get into the woodworking as we consider it today until like 15 or 16 i mean it they'd spent a lot of time doing the busy work so i would really highly suggest that if you're wanting to teach your own kids or stuff like that to do this level i would wait till they're about 13. Now, having said that, to prep for this course, uh, I would, if you have the ability to, to make a uh, bench hook. Now, it doesn't have to be a thick piece of wood. It could be just a piece of plywood that you attach two boards on there. And you don't even have to mill those up. If you can go by and I use yardsticks, and then maybe get a 1x2 or a 1x4, something like that and just drill it on there in spots that you know you won't be sawing into, that will work. The key thing is you have to have them parallel to each other so that I build them in pairs of twos so that I can do longer boards stretch out over a distance. This one isn't as critical. If you build them out of plywood, just having another piece of plywood over here to prop this end up works just fine whenever you do that. And in this class, we will be using this quite a bit because it's a very simple, efficient, and inexpensive tool uh, for holding purposes. If you can't use this, you can always use those little quick clamps and just clamp a board running across the table, just something that they can push against. That will work just fine you don't have to do anything outrageous i would suggest getting a decent chisel and you do not have to get a full set for the way i teach a half inch is just fine in fact if you look back here i have a full set of chisels only one of them is mushroomed on top and you will notice how much shorter it is than all the others because that's really the only one i ever use so just get a decent half inch chisel and in the next episode I will cover that one and make sure it's sharp when you give it to the student. You don't want the student to have to sharpen their first tool and having a really sharp tool will give them a good impression of the craft because the tool will work as it should. Worst thing you can do is give a, a new student 
a tool that doesn't quite work the way it should because they don't know that one and they will just assume it's their skill level that's making stuff go bad. So make sure it is perfectly sharp and get them a good one because chisels are cheap and these are lifetime tools to me. Good one, $12, $13. Finally, I personally would take this as an opportunity to teach them some first aid, uh, how to deal with a cut and stuff like that because they will cut themselves. A very sharp chisel is actually a saber chisel. They won't cut themselves as often, and if they do cut them, it'll be a cleaner cut, and it will heal really fast. I mean, a sharp chisel cut, really, you put a Band-Aid on it, a day or two later, you, you'd be hard-pressed to find it. It's only the dull ones where the, the cut's kind of ragged that you can feel them a week later. But use this as a learning opportunity of risk aversion or risk assessment, stuff like that. Example. You know, me saying that the chisel is a two-handed tool, you should never use it one-handed, and then I did that example where we held it like a pencil. Well, what was the risk here? I'm not holding one board in one hand and using it in the other. This is the danger thing. This is how people get hurt. What I was doing is clamping the board down so it wouldn't move. My hand was still out of the way, and I was moving the chip sharp edge away from it. So risk assessment that was a very safe operation. And finally, due to the exercise, the experience of feeling how the blade is working will be a lesson that they will carry with them for the rest of their woodworking career. I've done this uh, quick lesson numerous times when I was running a school and even experienced woodworkers that came in for the first time that they, you know, they thought they knew everything and they just wanted to do a sharpening lesson or something like that. We ran through this quick little exercise and all of a sudden their brains are opening up. Oh, that's why my drill bits aren't working right. I need to sharpen the little points, not just the flats. That's why my band say, so they understood now why they had to put pressure more at sometimes than others. Things just click, 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 click because they've never done an exercise like that. So do the exercise. This board right here, uh, I buy one by um, fours from a big box store. This is a select pine, but it doesn't really matter. Just get the cheapest stuff. Um, and it, they're about three and a half inches. Now I cut out seven inches sections. And we'll be using this shape quite a bit in this series just because it's nice, small, and we can do a lot with it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. I do hope you use this as a chance to explore this. You might not be a woodworker yourself, but you go out, you do a few exercises, you learn how to explain stuff. You know, your teenager could benefit from that one and see that, hey, they're learning at the same time. We can go along this at the same time. You're just a half a day ahead of them. So get out there, do the exercise, explore, have fun. And by the end of this series, You'll have a good grasp of what woodworking is so that when you go down different areas, furniture making, carving, turning, all that kind of stuff, you'll be able to, your learning curve will ramp up a little bit quicker and you'll enjoy it and you won't get as frustrated. And that's my whole goal is I don't want the new woodworkers to become frustrated because they don't have that small foundation they need. Y'all be safe, have fun, and remember, it's always worth the effort to learn, create, and share.